Dipper and Mabel and the Curse of the Time Pirate's Treasure. Hello there, dear reader. What you hold in your hand is not an ordinary book. This book is an adventure, one in which every decision is made by you or by your pushy friend, if he or she happens to be reading over your shoulder. I hate when people do that. I'm talking to you, Steve. Our characters have a perilous journey ahead. And it's up to you to make the right calls to send them to a happy ending or to a horrifying fate. If you do end up casting Dipper, Mabel, and blend it into a wormhole, don't feel too bad. You can always use a form of time travel known as flipping back through the pages to try again. With enough good sense and luck, you may find the coveted Time Pirate's Treasure. For your sake, I hope you do, because the friend reading over your shoulder will probably make fun of you if you fail. Steve is such a jerk sometimes. Think he's better than me just because his dad owns a yacht. Good luck making the right choices, if you dare. Sincerely, Omniscient Nameless Narrator. It's another usually unusual day in Gravity Falls. The green grass rustling in the breeze, the sun shining down through the trees, and a pair of familiar twins strolling through the forest. As usual, they're in the middle of an argument. It doesn't matter! says Dipper Pines. Just pick one while already. Yes, it does matter, says Mabel Pines, holding two sweaters in her hands. The sweater I wear has to match the day perfectly. It's sunny, so I feel like wearing my puppy with shade sweater. But I've also got a really good feeling about this glittery yarn ball sweater. Little choices like this aren't important, says Dipper. That's why I wear the same outfit every day, so I can focus on big choices. And everyone else can focus on trying to ignore how bad you smell, laughs Mabel. After pondering seriously, she finally puts on the yarn ball sweater, tossing the other aside. I think I'm going to go with yarn ball today, she says. I wore a dog sweater yesterday, and I don't want people to think I'm getting predictable. Dipper throws out his arms and stops Mabel in her tracks. Do you hear that, he says. Mabel looks around. Is that the sound of fashion lovers everywhere applauding my sweater decision? Dipper frowns. It sounds like... digging. He leads Mabel up a mossy hill. They peer over it just as... Smack! Aw, oh, time dang it! Says a portly man in a gray jumpsuit and goggles who just smacked himself in the face with a shovel. He stands in the middle of a clearing surrounded by nearly a hundred shallow holes. Blendin, Blendin! Shouts Mabel beaming. Who goes there? Blendin shrieks, wielding his shovel like a sword. I have various futuristic weapons. I will attempt to figure out how to use them if you get closer, he shouts. Dipper and Mabel laugh and slide down the hill. Hey, buddy, how are you, says Dipper. How's the new hair working out, asks Mabel. You too, says Blendon. I should have known. I'll have you know my business is personal. Sure are a lot of holes here, says Dipper. Hundreds of holes, says Mabel. What's with all the holes, asks Dipper. Are you looking for gophers? asks Mabel, because that's adorable and we want in. Blendon blots his brow. What I'm doing is a secret, he says, scowling before accidentally hitting himself in the face with the shovel again. He grumbles and breaks his shovel over his knee. Fine, I'll tell you, but only because I need help. I'm looking for a buried treasure hidden by a madman. This treasure is so large and powerful that the kindest of souls have made ghosts of their enemies to get it. Is the treasure friendship? asks Mabel. No, it isn't friendship, screams Blunden. I'm talking about the legendary Time Pirate's Treasure. Ooh, says Mabel. It's the greatest treasure ever known, because it's every great treasure ever known. The Time Pirates are a group of rogue time anomaly enforcement agents who traveled through history and stealing the world's most famous treasures. The Holy Grail, the Philosopher's Stone, Abraham Lincoln's pet Dodo and they dress like pirates because it looks cool! That's debatable, says Dipper. Hey, they're the most feared and respected group of rapscallions to ever exist, said Blendon, and I've found a way to steal their most precious possession. Stealing from bloodthirsty pirates seems kind of dangerous, Dipper says. I thought you hated danger and doing things. Look, sighs Blendon, I don't know if you know this, but my life isn't exactly great. Even though you got me my old job back, I live with my mom. My co-workers still make fun of me, and I'm so stressed my new hair keeps falling out. Blendon pulls out a clump of hair and scatters it into the wind. 
If I could take even one quarter of that treasure, I could finally get the respect I need. But I can't do it alone. If you haven't noticed, London motioned to the field of holes. So, what do you say? Help me thief from these thieves? I don't know, says Dipper. We were going to watch TV all day. Or read a book, said Mabel. I heard someone on TV say they're still making books. We could split the treasure three ways, said Blunden, smiling. That's more than a million dollars each. But isn't time travel super dangerous, asked Dipper. What if I step on a twig and create a future where everyone turns into lizard people? The lizard people scenario happens only 40% of the time, says Blunden. And they're usually pretty nice. Plus, I brought some laser blasters to keep us safe. Look! Blunden whips out one of the strange time travel weapons and fires it into the forest. They hear what sounds like totally determined screaming in the distance. See? Blunden says. Works like a charm. Dipper and Mabel look at each other and huddle up. Mabel. A lot of treasure would be cool, Dipper whispers. Yeah, I could use it to buy moon shoes or a guild waddles in solid gold, says Mabel. And I could build my own laboratory to study the weirdness of Gravity Falls and possibly get a few hundred pairs of the exact same outfit to wear. Dipper glances up at Blunden, who's watching from a distance. Then back at Mabel. So what do we do, Mabel? Should we help Blunden out? Reader, what should Dipper and Mabel do? Decline Blunden's offer. Go to page 71. Go after the treasure. Go to page 103.